So now I will show you how to do a factory network unlock. In my opinion, this is the most valuable way to unlock your phone. And once you have an unlocked phone, you will be able to resell it at a higher price and your phone will be compatible worldwide with all carriers. The first thing we have to do is to disable Find My iPhone. So simply go to settings, scroll down where it says iCloud and scroll all the way down where it says Find My iPhone. Make sure it is completely off so uh, you can turn it back on once your iPhone has been unlocked successfully. All right, so then we have to get the IMEI number. Simply open your dial pad and type star hash zero six hash. So as you will see, your 15 digit IMEI number will appear. You can also find this number on the back part of the box of your phone or also in the SIM card tray. All right, so this is by far the most important part of the whole unlocking process. Now keep this number somewhere close as we will need it in a few seconds to unlock this phone. All right, so now we're gonna use the computer. iTunes saying, congratulations, your iPhone has been unlocked. Boom, there you go guys. Your phone is now fully factory unlocked and now it's compatible worldwide with all carriers. You should get a full signal on your new carrier. And that's it, guys. That's how we unlock an iPhone 7. That's all for today, guys. If you have any questions, just leave me a comment and I'll try to help you as soon as I can. By the way, guys, we're also giving away a free iPhone 7, completely sealed, brand new phone. You can find the instructions on how to enter the giveaway in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care. What's up, YouTube? Saf here on Super Saf TV, and this is ChargeGate. So earlier this week, I did a charging speed test between the iPhone 7 Plus, the Google Pixel XL, and the Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge. Now the key thing that came out of that video was the fact that the iPhone 7 Plus takes an extremely long time to charge using the native charger that comes out of the box. However, I did mention that if you use the iPad charger, then the iPhone 7 Plus charges a lot quicker. How much quicker? Well, I have two iPhone 7 Pluses here, and we're gonna be charging both of them, one with the standard charger that comes out of the box, and the other with the iPad charger. So getting straight to it, the phone on the left hand side is connected to the standard charger. The phone on the right hand side is using the iPad charger. I'm gonna start the timer and switch on the power on both at the exact same time. And you can see the empty battery symbol on both devices here because both have been completely discharged to the point where they don't switch on. Now 10 seconds in, what you'll notice straight away is that the iPhone 7 Plus on the right hand side has already started to boot up, whereas the one on the left hand side hasn't. So you can already see the effects of the increased power that's coming in through the iPad charger. Now, side note, neither of these devices have a SIM card in. Flight mode has been switched on on both. Bluetooth and location are also switched off on both. This is to make sure that we're specifically looking at charge times and there are no other external factors which may affect the results. Now, fast forward to around two minutes and 10 seconds and that's when the phone on the left hand side has enough juice to actually power up. So some very early results already. Now we're gonna be checking the progress every half an hour. So skipping to around 30 minutes. The one on the left is around 17% and the iPhone on the right is on around 34%. So we already have double the amount of charge on the iPhone 7 Plus using the iPad charger. Now skipping to around after one hour, the iPhone on the left is on around 35% the one on the right around 64%. After one and a half hours, we've got 53% versus 85%. So a significant difference. Now after around two hours, we're on 70% versus 98%. So almost completed here using the iPad charger. Checking again at around two hours and four minutes, we're on 99%. And finally at two hours and five minutes is when the iPhone 7 Plus using the iPad charger completes charging. At this point, the iPhone 7 Plus using the standard charger is at 73%. After around two and a half hours, we're at 84%. And after three hours, we're on around about 95%. So it's already taking quite a lot longer for the iPhone 7 Plus to charge using the standard charger. And after three hours and 20 minutes, we're still on around 98%. So this last chunk is taking quite some time and checking after three hours and 30 minutes, we are still on 98%. Now, something to bear in mind is that in the previous test, the iPhone 7 Plus did complete charging at around three hours and 27 minutes, but that did start at 1%. This time we have gone from 0% when it was completely switched off. Checking again at three hours and 40 minutes, we're still on 99% and that's the same at around three hours and 42 minutes. And finally, at three hours and 43 minutes is when we reach 100%. So as expected, the iPhone 7 Plus charges significantly quicker using the iPad charger compared to the standard charger that comes out of the box. Now, here's my problem with this and should also be your problem if you're a consumer. The fact that I've paid a lot of money for this, 720 pounds is what it starts at. And if you go for one of the larger options, then it can cost you up to almost $1,000. 
and for that price I'd expect a decent charger to be included inside the box and not have to go and spend $20 more, £20 more to get something that's going to give me some decent charging times. Now let me just go on record to say that the iPhone 7 Plus is probably one of the best smartphones out there in terms of battery life. It does last a very very long time but the charge times with the standard charger are an absolute joke and Apple should really be including the fast charger inside the box. Now as consumers if we say nothing and do nothing then Apple are going to do nothing and whether you're a fanboy or not you can't deny that this is an issue and Apple should really do something about it. And how do we get them to do something about it? Well, share this video, use the hashtag ChargeGate and keep sending this video to Apple, whether that be via Twitter, email or whatever else. And hopefully they'll take that feedback on board and next year we'll get a decent charger inside the box instead of the cheapy standard one that they currently include. So that's it from me guys, a bit of a rant. Hopefully you did find it useful. If you did, then do leave it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, then make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching, this is Saf on SuperSaf TV and I'll see you next time.